you. Welcome back to Network Africa. Now, over the last six years, there have been attempts by the government to increase the price of fuel in Nigeria. Some have been mere rumors, while others have been openly rejected by Nigerians. So our next report examines the lingering fuel scarcity over the last six months and reactions to the government's new pump price. To be or not to be is the seesaw game that has been on since 2012 when the country stood in opposition to the removal of subsidy from Premier Motor Spirit, popularly called petrol. The implications became grave and obviously pronounced at the dawn of this administration. The scarcity of petroleum products was largely hinged on the halting of importation by major marketers who were skeptical that President Buhari would pay back the subsidy. Since they were being owed more than $500 million in subsidy as of the point of discussion, all that got resolved at least to the extent that the parties involved were having meaningful discussion with the Minister of State for Petroleum, who was appointed early in August 2015 as GMD and Junior Minister later in October. From then till date, he's been battling from trying to reform the industry in terms of management and policy to fixing moribund infrastructure like the pipelines and the refineries and to the almost now a daily routine of explaining how the lingering fuel scarcity will disappear. He got his fingers burned several in attempts to find solution, making all sorts of pronouncements, yet the situation did not abate completely. I do apologize if um, a comment that I made uh, jocularly with my uh, friends in the press uh, about being a magician uh, offended uh, some Nigerians. It wasn't meant to be. Some respite started trickling in following review of allocation to major marketers which initially favored more imports to the NMPC. Critical to all of this was the difficulty in assessing foreign exchange that either was scarce or was sold at twice the government price of 199 naira to a dollar. Subtly, in the several complaints and lamentations by Nigerians who now have as part of their itinerary the long wait at fuel station said it was best to just deregulate the sector. Price changes notwithstanding, since the product is scarcely seen and is hardly sold at control price of 86.50. Removing subsidies is not a, uh, a difficult thing. Once the government stops fixing prices and allow investors to import fuel and sell to Nigeria, they can regulate the quality, but they should not regulate the price. Today, it seems like all the speculations, all the waiting, all the fears have finally been laid to rest. Anyone, and indeed anyone, can now source for money, go abroad, and import petrol, but should not sell above one or 45 naira per litre. Though the government did not use the word deregulation, it's only granted that now that the market has been freed, it has automatically been deregulated. In the days ahead, it will become clear how it will all sit well with the polity and, of course, for the petroleum downstream sector. Stay tuned. Olu Phillips, Channels Television News. In the meantime, the Minister of Petroleum, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, has told the House of Representatives that the federal government had no option that to increase the price of petrol. Dr. Ibe Kachuku, who is currently being grilled by the lawmakers in the House uh, chambers on the situation in the petroleum sector, said the decision became necessary because of the diminished forex supply in the country. This, he explained, forced marketers to stop importation of the product forcing the NNPC to take on the burden of importing 90% of fuel with the attendant shortage in supply. Prior to Dr. Kachuku's briefing, there was a rowdy session, as you can see there in the chamber, as PDP lawmakers refused to allow him entry into the chamber. The lawmakers resorted to waving the national flag while singing protest songs and vowed not to allow the minister into the chamber. Well, Labour is insisting it will embark on a strike action on Wednesday if the federal government does not revert to the old pump price of fuel. A currently a meeting with the federal government on that. We'll have more on that story later. But a strike right now could hurt Nigerians and the economy. But I'm not the one to do the analysis. I've been joined by the CEO, Partnership Investment Company, Mr. Vito Ogemoying. Thank you for joining us on the program, sir. Uh, we know that the current pump price of fuel is hard on Nigerians. Sir. Are you also the view that due to competition in the near future, it could come down? What I'll say is that we needed to make that decision because it's a hard decision. Uh, it's difficult to, to observe. But if you look at what's happened in the last few days, when most of us have had to stay in queues and pay 
and it's not for fuel. I think realistically, we know that we don't have to supply for an exchange, so we need to deregulate that. So the regulating the two things that are hampering the economy is very important. One is taking the subsidy of fuel, the next taking the subsidy of foreign exchange. If you do those things, there will be short term you know, effect of kind of shock and the price will go up. But I can assure you that if we let the market work itself out, in a very short term, we see the market stabilized and maybe even we see backwards. You know, we'll find better supply, we'll find ways that will make the economy work a lot better than it is. It is, it is shameful that there is no key fuel queues in Benin Republic or Togo, but there are fair queues in Nigeria. Yes, those places don't produce anything. So I think it is important that we understand that Nigerians will have to take the shock for now. It is, it is a policy that will work out properly for everybody. Uh, Labour is uh, threatening a strike action from Wednesday, advising Nigerians to stock up because they will not back down from 86 naira 50 copper per litre. That was the previous pump price of uh, petrol. Would it be wise, would you say, in our present e economic situation for Labour to embark on this move now? I think everybody agrees that Labour is behind the curve on this one. In fact, I think they are going to see that interpretation when they go out and see that they are not very many people are enthusiastic to go along with them. It'd be interesting to see how the labor leaders themselves, for the first time, do their own match, let the rest of us at home and watch them. I think it would be important that people know that this is not the time to further disrupt the economy because it would further do damage you know, beyond what it has done. We should be realistic, but again, given the fact that they have a constituency, they must be seen to show some reason, uh, but they should be careful about it. Don't overdo it. You know, the uh, price for her, which is because at the end of the day, you can't expect workers to take the uh, pain and not take the good part of it. I think government should quickly look into, you know, looking at the wage increases that, that are reasonable, and then not look at the way of quickly transferring the social uh, net programs, you know, translating it quickly so that the economy can see the palliatives working. I think this is the sense that everybody needs to be taking into consideration. We all need to be very careful. The economy is very fragile right now. And unless we do the right things and you know, be prepared for the kind of changes that will make our lives better, we should, we should just be prepared for a hard time for now, but things will be better in the year after. Uh, Mr. Gemway, if Labour does, does embark on this strike action, how much of an impact do you think it will have on Nigerians as well as the economy? I have to plead with them that they should understand that growing the economy is not the way to make it grow. So that's what's going to happen. Once uh, Labour withdraws uh, you know, uh, their, their services, no, no part of the economy can work properly. Of course, the first thing you see is that banks shut down because of only guns, and then you see. Uh, a lot of other people can't do what their business because of that. I think nobody is underestimating the power of labor to shut down the economy. But that's not what we want right now. We have to appeal to them to show some displeasure that uh, is, uh, is, is essential for their constituencies. But it seems I don't overdo it. Uh, let us be reasonable. Let us talk about how they can meet the government to increase wages in a way that it would affect them too terribly. But well, while we await the outcome of that meeting between Labour and the federal government, which we understand should be starting, or should have started by now, and we don't know how long that will be, how can Nigerians ease their way through this hopefully short period of hardship? First of all, the, that's the reason why market forces work much better than anything else. Because you are going to find that because of the high price of, of fuel, we are all going to rationalize our driving because we cannot afford to pay uh, for petrol. The second part will be that another area where labor needs to emphasize is to make sure that government quickly put a lot of buses on the street, for instance. If I were in government, if I wanted to do anything, first thing I would do is, in order to get this problem a little bit, you know, give it to everybody, we now have a system of BVM that is very easy to uh, uh, identify people. The 5,000, for instance, should be granted a one-time grant to any Nigerian who has a BVM. That means it's a one-time grant. You may not pay all of them at once. It might be, she might be paying some people 
five years from now when they bring their baby in. But if you do that, that 5,000 will go into everybody. It's not unusual. You have seen in America, during George Bush, when the 209 crisis was on, there was a tax being paid to everybody, which cash was actually posted to every American. But here we don't have such a very mm -hmm. efficient system. The BVM is probably the most efficient that we, we, we are close to. So let's push that money to the system, reinflate the economy. The economy is reflation right now. Then let us also see how we can put a lot of buses on the streets to make sure that mass transit you know, feels safe. And then uh, fewer vehicles will be, will be on the road, coming go with Georgia. They are very close if they can enter an efficient bus service and stay to them and bring them back to work. So those are the kind of things labor should push for. And those are the things that popular government will also uh, push forward. They are going to revise wages, put many buses on, on the desert, and then they are going to reinflate the economy generally in a very quick way that will put money in everybody's pocket. That money will be spent and the economy will, be, you know, will bounce back from that. I think those are the kind of things I would recommend. Mr. Ogemwangi, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. We'll leave that discussion there. We come back after the break. Justice still catching up with those who took part in the Rwanda genocide. Stay with us for the details. <laughs>